It's Royce Unchained, presented by Josh Arnold, investment consultant, Mr. Money Talk, Mr. Game Winning Drive, Mr. Fourth Quarter Comeback, struck again <laughs> last the late game luminary, Pat. He yes, struck again yes. last night. After absolutely sucking for three quarters, uh, when he got down inside the the uh you know, he was down there a couple of times and ended up kicking field goals, which was familiar to all Viking fans, but uh uh, Philadelphia, very overrated, man. The Falcons were much more physical than they were. They pounded them. They couldn't. They couldn't rush the quarterback. Uh, the uh, you know the uh, how many the Robinson was. Uh, what's the, what's the running back Robinson, right? What's yeah. a he was tearing them up the first half, and uh, it was uh, hard for them to get to a situation where they only had sixteen points as much as they were moving the ball. Uh, but Philadelphia, that guy's not going to last. By the way, they were all they were all mad that they brought Nick back, weren't they? Because they had so many collapses late in the oh, season. Oh, Sirianni, the great, yeah, yeah. And then another the, super the weird great. defensive post game press conference where they're asking about there's a lot, I mean there's a lot of good questions to be asked about the way they screwed up the clock at the end. Yeah. And he and he so the someone start because he got play calling duties stripped from him. And yeah. they handed him over to what's his name, Kellen Moore. Del- Kellen Delton's Moore. guy, Kellen, Kellen Moore. 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 And yeah. so a reporter asked Nick Sirianni about like that play calling sequence. You know, did you green light that? And he goes, "If you're trying to stir things up, Kellen calls the plays. I am the head coach." Like, <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Little guy. defensive. Sounds good. Well, uh, after all of that, uh, the fact that uh, the Barkley drops the pass wide open, that he's going to strut down and get the first down, they're going to win the game was uh was bad but yeah i'll give kirk credit he made cup completed a couple 20 yarders to an open receiver that was uh, that was that was great so uh anyway yeah that it, it's good for him too because uh if if they lose that one and uh the, the number of times they were down there and didn't score big he'd get a lot of heat next time he comes back to atlanta but now he's a hero for 10 minutes so that's okay so we we now know officially boys that ed donatel was a true vic Fangio disciple though don't we did that that was the 2022 Vikings approach to prevent that is as big a prevent defense dropping everybody back like what the hell are you doing yeah right I don't know yes I I know they're letting them complete 20 yard passes is that uh I don't know who thinks this is a good idea I don't I don't I don't don't get it you know how long have we been complaining about I remember Sid complaining about prevent defenses in 1963. For God's sakes, so, you know we've been we've been complaining about them for a hundred years. What do, what do they do? I don't, you know, unless there's in the current NFL, unless there's 15 seconds to go, you got to play defense because they when you got guys that uh, you know as quick as they can go down the field. I I don't get it. It was it was absolutely idiotic. Was that their big move this year? They brought him in as a defensive coordinator, or was he there already, Fangio? He's new there. He's new there. Dolphins yeah. last year. Who thought that was a good idea? Who's their general manager there? The guy was uh, that Howie Roseman. Rodgers. Howie Roseman. Yeah, he's yeah. considered a genius, right? Uh, wasn't Wasn't he a genius there? Yeah, when they he the he was board? like six years ago. Things yeah, have been right. kind. Of, but that that you guys that was the ultimate like Vikings fan vortex last night, watching oh, Kirk yeah. Cousins in a Falcons uniform try to score a game-winning touchdown against the Ed Donichel defense dressed in <laughs> yes. Eagles garb. Like, yes. I was triggered a couple times on both sides watching it, you know, PTSD, mm-hmm. thinking back to two years ago. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, that was, they, what were they, you got the ball with a minute and 40 to go or so, yeah. right? Yeah, and then they were just years, boom, boom, boom. What, 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 what did they think they were doing? I, I don't know. It was, uh, it was ridiculous. And he made uh, two or three throws there. It doesn't look like he's got a bad foot like everybody thought he had last week, right? Well, that's the weird thing. So there was some more reporting that came out because they didn't run any play action or they ran barely any under center two in week one. And Mm -hmm. the explanation was he can't get out on the bootlegs and on the stretch handoffs. He never could. Well, but he could more than he could more than he can out. But they they opened the game last night with – Kirk under center, the the sort of the outside handoffs yes. and play action. So, so Kirk had a conversation with somebody behind the scenes there yeah. and said, "Hey, all right, let's get back to what 
butters my bread throughout my career. Is the run back in the NFL, by the way, uh, Green Big Bay time. slashing people and uh, and now uh, Pitt, Philadelphia, I mean, Atlanta basically – Set the whole game up with by running the ball, and it's uh, is it is it uh, is it making a comeback here because nobody defends it anymore? What the hell? Yeah, is going the, on? there's there's some uh, football analytics nerds that I follow on Twitter that are doing deep dives on this. The the numbers are the touchdown pass numbers are way down through two weeks and yardage, and uh, and they just they chalk it up to the last five to ten years, teams have gone so far in the direction of stopping the pass, and now offenses yeah. are readjusting to Good. maybe smaller defensive packages, and so it's it's always cyclical, as they say in the NFL. Yes, well, it's uh, yeah. As, as a guy who can't stand Kirk, I of course wasn't rooting for him, but uh, you know he he won the game, so that's uh, you know that's that gets him that gets gets him a week of relief down in Atlanta. Well, they play the Chiefs on Sunday night next weekend too, so that would have been they zero and two going them. into that game. They could beat the Chiefs, man. The Chiefs, uh, who, who's out? They lost uh, one of their guys, right? Didn't they? Well, Pacheco's they out. Call. They lost their running, and they back barely there. beat Cincinnati. But yeah. You know, they, yeah. we talked about that on Unchained I love the Monday. people, though, saying the Chiefs got the call. The guy ran into the receiver two seconds before yeah. the ball got there, for God's sakes. It was a know? good call. Yeah. Hey, meanwhile, yes, meanwhile, Royce, let's talk about the the uh, Cleveland Twins. Game one, 3 nothing, looking good. And, uh, and you know what? Yeah. There's yeah, nothing to good. complain about, though. No, there's not. They can't I, get a hit because correct. they did everything you want them to do. And they correct. Just, it, it is not the manager didn't screw anything up. Nope. Nobody screwed anything up. They nope. just, uh, you know, they left what ten runners on base after they they got three runs. They should have gotten eight, and they got three because they, you know what. <laughs> Their lineup stinks. That's why. Even with two cripples back, it's not too good. So, uh, you know, and I, I mean, he bring, he, but... Jack's had thrown what five pitches or something no, to they, get out of the inning. You know, Rocco did everything right, and Pablo was fantastic. Right. This, uh, but uh, boy, was that kid sitting on that fastball! Oh, wow, uh, what man Manzarino is it? Manzarino. He's I I I was. I was switching over to the Tigers broadcast, and they were extremely excited because they were down 5-1 and then came back, and they were ahead 7-6. to six. And then they were talking about this kid. He's from Idaho. The left-handed hitter hit the home run. But his old man is from Michigan, big Tigers fan. And when he was a little kid, he was always dressed in Tiger onesies and stuff like that. So he's a big, <laughs> he's a big Tigers fan. So his two teams, this guy – are the Tigers and the Mariners because he was in Idaho and they used to go to Mariners games. So uh, wow, he's uh, he's uh, he's trying to ruin the uh, Twin season. But that's you know you lose that game and now you're running Zebby out there. And, and the Tigers are, I looked it up. They were 11 behind on August. What is it? Seventh, eighth, something like that. Uh, 11. Uh, no, uh, uh, when the Twins were. Not when the Twins were at their peak, but the Twins, they were 11 behind them at one point in late July, and now they're one and a half behind them. The Tigers have been playing, you know, they have one of the best records in the league since August 1st, 25 and 13 or something like that. So they got, and our, they got and some And they're probably going to gonna spend them. in the offseason. They're probably yeah. going to be big buyers. Yeah, yeah. And they, they got some life to them, unlike some other clubs we know. You know, I mean, they got, they're all fired up and they're jumping around and, we got guys just hanging on by their fingernails, man. It's bad. You know what? Do you... I don't care if they make it or not. Really, I, I don't think it makes any difference. It's it's. I mean, if you yes, it gets you off the hook for not doing anything. But this team is no good. You know, they're not good. So what the hell? You got two pitchers. One of them just lost. You're bringing in Cole Irvin, who the who's a lefty, and he's so bad the Orioles let him go. And, uh, you know, it's yeah, – Buxton's – he's going to play every other game, maybe two out of three. Correa's going to play every other game. Uh, you know, they might they might make you take Kepler back and play him and get rid of Walner or Larnick, who are both better than Kepler. So I don't think it really makes any difference. They, they just – they aren't any good, you know. That's their problem. They haven't yeah. been any good since the uh, middle of August. 
in like a month and a half ago, you could you could start to make a case for the bullpen. You go down the list, yeah. you know, you, Jax and Duran and Alcala. Yeah, and now he's they a month later, same, like off the roster. To, they sent him to St. Paul, boy. That was that was kind of vicious. What the, it's I, crazy. You know, he, has, he hasn't been good, but uh, so you'd rather have a guy named Blewett in the bullpen than him, huh? That's, mm-hmm. uh, well, that's that, the thing. It's I mean, because mm-hmm. now correct me if I'm wrong. You can still bring Alcala back up, I and think, he's postseason think, eligible, like in a week or something, right? I yes. don't think the 15 days counts the postseason, you know, because if they yeah. normally if you option him and nobody's hurt, he can't come back for 15 days. Well, he'll be back, I, I would guess. But he, guess what? He'll be back in February when pitchers and catchers report because they aren't making it. Yeah. They aren't making it. Okay. It's over. It's over. They're going to end up fourth in the division, but they will finish ahead of the whiteys. So we, we got that going for Are we kind of to the point, I know what Judd's answer is where we're all sort of just rooting for them to finish the collapse at this point. Cause that's, <laughs> yes. that's, that's the more intriguing I, story and it might lead to some drama this uh, off season, some changes. I wouldn't say I'm rooting for it, but I'm indifferent to it. It's, okay. It, it's, if they don't make it, fine. I don't care because what you know the way they've played for since the middle of August, the, what they've been sending out, what they've you know what they did at the trading deadline. I wasn't crazy like everybody else, but doing that, they they're getting exactly what they deserve. So. Uh, and do yeah. you want them in the playoffs, though? Like, I don't have I any don't interest gonna, in seeing them. You there. gotta, you gotta pay. Uh, you gotta play. Uh, you know, you gotta pay the expenses to fly them someplace for two games to get beat. So that's you know. So they're gonna go down to Houston now. Houston's not playing good, but it doesn't mean they won't beat the Twins nine to two twice or something. But uh, well, yeah, because they can't yeah. hit. What happened to Pablo last night, though? He's cruising. Why is he go? Why is he bother to give up two runs? All I don't blame him. I, no, I don't either. Right. I don't either. But come on, you know that looked like shutout stuff for most of the game, and then, uh, and then all of a sudden. But Jacks, you know, Jacks to me is their MVP this season because they don't have any position. Either him or Carlos Santana. They don't have a position player really that's an MVP. And to have that, I mean, that kid, that ball was smoked. God almighty, was he sitting on that. If he would have thrown him his changeup or his sweeper, the guy would have fell on his head. He would have sw- he was swinging so hard. But he threw him the fastball right there, and that kid killed it. So, and I, you know, the Guardians have a lower payroll than the Twins. It's amazing what that yeah. team has done this year. They're going to end up with the second best record in the American League, and they still got a chance to catch the Yankees, and it's it's phenomenal. Yeah, and you know, to to Declan's point about the Tigers, like the Tigers have they've come on in the second half. If they want to spend money, they've got room yes. to spend money. The White Sox are going to be garbage again, but all of a sudden, you got three other teams in this division yes. that are tracking to be playoff contenders not just this year but next year pat kansas city's good you know they're gonna they went out and got some people this year but they you know they're young and on the rise and uh yeah you're you're a solid fourth place next year no matter what uh happens to, to the end of this year this team is it's it's uh you know the dreary days are ahead i wouldn't say it's uh it's 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 happening dreary where you finish 19 and 50 as soon as Phil starts telling <laughs> uh, selling t-shirts but it's uh it's uh they got everybody mad at them be, first be, first because they didn't spend any money then because of the TV situation and now the way they're playing and uh they you know they're they're They've put their season, their postseason tickets on sale to help you get tickets for next year. And during their break, <laughs> and during their breaks, they are interviewing season ticket holders. You know, on, on the TV cast last week, they were interviewing. And I'm, I'm waiting for one of the guys saying, "Yeah, we were thinking about redoing, but we're canceling too, just like everybody else." So yeah, they're in trouble. They're in the trouble. Uh, the the photo of Rocco and Pablo and Correa on the mound today on the cover of uh, today's Star Tribune perfectly encapsulates mm-hmm. how this team feels. They yeah. all look like they would prefer to be any place else <laughs> but there. And Correa, look, I've never seen Correa. Look, like, he ordinarily looks like he's got a spark, right? 
Yeah. He looks miserable. Yeah, and he said after the he said before the game he felt great. Didn't he tell us like two days ago yes. the pain was excruciating? So uh, I he don't... said two days ago that that it still hurts, and then yeah. he said before the game on Monday, yeah, I feel fantastic. Yeah, well, he's uh, you know he's uh, still trying to be a PR guy, but uh, oh, that was a you know there's been bad losses because of things they did. Right, right. And this was just a bad loss because they got beat. And people are taking us back to 40 years ago, 1984, when the Twins went in there. And uh, this isn't like blowing a 10 nothing lead like they had uh, or or R.D. giving up Jamie Quirk's only hit as a Cleveland Indian. It was, it was a home run. It's not, it's, you know, somebody said shades of R.D., I wouldn't put Griffin Jackson in the shades of RD category uh, since he's been your best player at any position this year. But it's it is forty years we're celebrating the anniversary this year of the of the. We should bring yeah. We should bring back every uh, every key player involved. Yes, yes, yeah. A lot of good players. Hey, where's Jamie Quirk? He, Jamie Quirk's a coach somewhere. Usually, I don't know where he's at. Yeah, he is. Wonder if he's available to come in. We could bring him in. RD would come in. He'd take a free trip from Arizona. He's the only guy who runs a fishing store in the in the desert of Arizona. That's RD. You know, he's a, he's got a fishing store and he's in the dust bowl. But I think uh, it's intended for people going up into the mountains in Scottsdale. But mm. I remember talking to him 15 years ago. I said, "Wait a minute, you're you're running a fishing place in Scottsdale." Well, there's no water. What the, what the hell? What the hell, RD? What's going on? But uh, yeah, it's uh, 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 it, bad news, man. Hey, but we always got the links, man. The links are going playoff for starting this weekend, seed. right? Yeah, this weekend going for the number one seed. I said this to Jed yesterday. Somebody was saying, "Well, they want to finish second so they don't have to play a Caitlin." No, you want to play Caitlin. Two home games, eighteen thousand, and you're better than they are, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you, know? you. It's the best of you make all the gate revenue, yes. and uh, you get to have some exciting times. Yeah, they yes. they should beat Indiana in a playoff yes, series. They are better than Indiana, so uh, yeah, yeah. You you fill the place. That's 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 what uh, that's that's the object. So anyway, what so, else? Well. Yeah. What else well, we got? Gophers, well, Iowa. What do you think? Gophers. Guys? So Iowa. What what is it right now? Is it a point and a half? Iowa, I think is the yes. latest. Yeah, I think is so that, it's yeah, projected a, to be a pretty close one here. Well, Iowa is same. They're not as bad offensively as last year, but damn near. They're not. Uh, they're not uh, very good at all. I see. We got a story today on the fair catch. Really? How are we past that now? Can't we? Do we have to still still rivalry? The fair catch. The fans are still stuck. On, yeah. on a fair catch that wasn't yes. to end maybe the worst college yes. football D- Division One game of all of 2023. And, and if they didn't call that fair catch, this colossally inept Iowa team would have finished 11-1, and one, which would have been the biggest embarrassment in the history of the Big Ten to have these clowns end up what – they were eight and one in the division. They were eight and one in the league the way it was, wasn't it? Weren't they something? Or maybe they had a, they had a path. Yes, yeah, yes. They had a path. Yeah. To yeah. Do it. I mean, it was hilarious. God Almighty! I saw a, I saw a great T-shirt at the yes. I was at the Nevada Gophers game this weekend. I will tell on myself. Uh, and there was a Gopher fan with it was like a you know Gophers Iowa on the front, and on the back was the full explanation of the official fair catch rule <laughs> listed is out. Pretty good. <laughs> Oh, he should be. He should he should sit among some Iowa fans for that one. But uh, anyway, too bad though. Night games, night game. I don't. I don't like that. God intended college football to be played at one o'clock. That's a two Saturday after two thirty oh, kickoff for that would have been perfect. Yeah, yeah. Six thirty. Do we want drunk Iowans stumbling all over town at midnight? We don't. We don't want that. Do How we? did they get I mean, four straight home yeah. games to open the season? Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Isn't it? well. Well, you Not schedule the first. You schedule yeah. the first three, however you North want to. North Carolina is a is a trade off, you know. Right. And mm-hmm. then uh, they pay two then, schools to come. And in. then you have two and crappy the schools. Two, yeah. They paid one point two million to Nevada, five hundred thousand to Rhode Island. So, who was it uh, that someone paid the Notre Dame paid like yeah. two million dollars to Northern Illinois? No, no, one point four. One point four to Northern Illinois to lose to them. 
I had some great <laughs> tweets over the weekend, but my favorite was when uh, Notre Dame, I posted the Notre Dame score 66 to 7 over Purdue, and I said, Boy, Purdue has to be happy they're not playing uh, that Northern Illinois is not on the schedule. Exactly. But, uh, yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> the Notre Dameers did not like that. They they thought that. Uh, no, we're very sensitive. Or, and you I were shocked think, by I that. I don't think we get to play Purdue though, right? The Gophers don't. I don't think they play Purdue this year. I don't or think Nebraska, Purdue's... which is good, you know. So yeah, Nebraska with their weird Patrick Mahomes copycat quarterback. Yeah. Super yeah. weird. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah, that's like bizarre. Dylan Rayola, right? Yeah. That's his Patrick name. Mahomes. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, is that? I didn't Does realize. All the Do same it. pregame stuff. He's yeah. got oh, really? the same haircut, same facial hair, exactly. same number, same tape, same sleeve, and he does the like the the uh, go, go like just look up Nebraska quarterback Patrick Mahomes. It's the, uh, the, it's pretty wild. The big story in Mahomes land though is Brittany is rethinking her Trump support because he tweeted out, I hate Taylor Swift. She's got to make she's, a choice. It's she's very down, difficult. She's, gotta, right. she's, uh, she's uh, you know, she's got a tough decision to make here between the trumpeter and, uh, you know, and uh, and her pal. Uh, we Taylor. should have a debate between Taylor and Trump for the rights to Brittany Mahomes' friendship. Yeah. That's yeah, what we should do. That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, uh, how can you, you know, I'm, I'm not what you would call a big Taylor Swift fan, but how can you be dumb enough to say I hate Taylor? You're Swift? You're the only one. You're the only person in the entire world then that is not a big Taylor Swift. Fan. Well, here's my problem. I could be in a car and have her come out on a song, and I wouldn't know it was her. So I would. It's almost know every it song that FM mm -hmm. plays now. I can tell. Just her flip own. around. FM just plays. It's all Taylor Swift. Pat. You guys sound. Uh generationally can, old right now I the last 30 seconds. It's FM can, radio, if you listen to it, you are generationally old. I can tell if it's Merle Haggard or not, but Taylor Swift, <laughs> I don't know. Outlaw well, country. Lynn, you know, coal miner's daughter, I can tell you who's thinking that. But this, I told this, you. I'm not. You Outlaw know, country, I, Patrick. Outlaw yes, country. Yes, all right. That's me. All right. All right. All right well, we'll uh, get yeah. some more musical breakdowns from Judd and Pat FM on the next right. Royce Unchained. Edge. Cutting Edge should be the name of our musical show. Yes. Let's talk some more Beatles and Rolling Stones coming up <laughs> yeah, next. Right. On to something yes. here. Yeah. All right. Royce Unchained presented by Josh Arnold. Score North.